Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time where we speak with the sports journalists. Um, Monday, Thomas, on a beautiful Friday, uh, we're looking at the Super Falcons at the WAFCON 2022. Uh, Monday, Thomas, it's good to have you join us on a Friday. Good morning. Uh, fantastic platform to be talking sports this morning. I can't wait to get on with it. So let's get straight to it. Uh, we saw the Super Falcons have her opening game, losing to South Africa uh, on that two one uh you know scores and then you also have uh the super falcons also picking it up with Botswana and uh two zero right there and we're also anticipating the super falcons with the uh burundi team uh sometime on saturday but generally speaking let's get straight to it the opening match there's been a lot of reactions from nigerians and fans of the super falcons talking about you know, the selection of the game. We had no business losing that game whatsoever to a team as uh, South Africa. Looking at the fact that Nigeria has actually won this title for nine times. Okay. Um, uh, first off, I'd like to say that uh, the Women's Cup of Nation, I mean, the first edition we are seeing 12 teams, it, it's not going to be business as usual. Yeah, we saw that happen to the Super Falcons of Nigeria uh, with a very appalling performance in the first game against the Bayana Bayana of South Africa, who were uh, offered lots of uh, incentives to beat the Super Eagles. I mean, the Super, the, not the Super Falcons, because the Super Falcons are clearly a team to beat. For you to beat, it, to, for you to be a champion, you need to beat a champion. And the South African FA, they knew what was at stake, and they had to promise their, uh, their ladies a, a huge amount of money for them to do the business against Nigeria. But I think the Super Falcons were, uh, they underrated the Bayana Bayana, being that they are the nine times African champions, being that they've been on the pinnacle of women's football. And they thought it was going to be business as usual. But we saw a fantastic display from the Bayana Bayana of South Africa and a very appalling performance. Uh, from the Super Falcons, but it's not yet over. We can, it's not for us to just uh, let that slide and uh, get to give the girls the much needed belief once again. One, the world's on. We saw some changes in the second game against the Botswana, but I, I also think that we should also temper our expectations a little bit because I saw that game. I wasn't really impressed by the performance of the Super Falcons, although it was uh, considerably better than the one against South Africa. But I, I reckon that if Nigeria were to put up that kind of performance against South Africa again, they would have gotten, they, they would have been beaten again. Mm. But goodness gracious, they were playing against a team around 152 in the world, and of course the teams that are making their debut at the Women's Cup of Nation. So we, we just need to uh, give thanks and of course uh, move on that the Super Falcons have gotten, a, have gotten a win against the Botswana. But going forward, uh, going forward, I would like them to also take a look at every department. The attack was not connecting. And of course, we, it's, a, it's a crushing blow to the Super Falcons that they've lost their tallest woman, uh, Ashisha Oshola, to injury and she has returned to Spain. So it's time for the coach to get to talk uh, some uh, motivational talk uh, for, for the new uh, young staff, right? The likes of Gibbs Monday, who's making a TV at a major e e event for the Super Falcons. We also have the likes of Uchen Nakalu, but I was very impressed by uh, Ifoma Anomanu uh, finish right there in the first game. In the first goal was very key. So going forward, it's not going to be business as usual. Everyone wants to beat the Super Falcons, and they are going to do their very best to do so. The Super Falcons just need to uh, respect their opponent, give them the the not the let's just give them the, the, the Ma Monday uh, uh, for them. I mean, uh, let's yeah, even come back to, to it now. To... We're looking at the, you know, the opening game of the Super Falcons and the fact that they lost. Uh, you have mentioned that uh, it, it was more like the look down on the opponent who were talking about, you know, the Bafana, Bafana. That's uh, South Africans at this point in time. But that's not the case. You have a lot of people saying the selection was just uh, a total mess. It wasn't anything to write home about, and that's the reason. Not that we don't have, you know, great players, uh, you know, on the team, but the fact that, you know, the selection was not anything to write him about. The likes of uh, Uchenna, Kanu, uh, what happened to her? Was she on the bench? And then why do you have to play Asisato Ashwala? Uh, as much as we agree that, you know, she has all of the experience, selection 
is, has actually been what's been responsible, has been pointed out as a fact that's responsible for uh, the Super Falcons not winning that game against South Africa. Do you agree with this? Well, I wouldn't go with popular opinion. Uh, Randy Waldron, the uh, uh, best offense in that particular game, just that things can go wrong in a game. You can, you can come into a match with the best quality, play, the quality players and you go against your opponent who just come out to twat your plan. That's what happened, uh, happened against the Bayana Bayana. There was nothing wrong. We put in our highest goal scorer, uh, uh, Ashisha Shola, the Women's uh, Player of the Year in the 2018 Cup Award. We had a nominee being very experienced at the back line. Our goalkeeper, Tochiko Loi, who was not very good, was in uh, a replacement for the number one goalkeeper, uh, Namaka Odilti, who came on in the second game and was absolutely prolific. So the, I won't go with the popular opinion. It was just the first loss of the tournament. If you can remember in 2018, Nigeria lost to South Africa in the first game, but they went ahead to win the Cup of Nation. I mean, it, it doesn't matter how, uh, if you lose the game. What happens is how you react when you lose the game. And definitely, they reacted in a very good way, although they didn't still perform very well against Botswana, but they were able to get three points and a clean sheet. So we should just move past that defeat. Well, Monday, Thomas, but you would also want to agree with me that it's not uh, as much as it's okay to move forward, but you need to understand what happens in the past. And that's why, you know, those who are super fans of the Super Falcons are very concerned with what went down. Now, also, if you remember, the manager of uh, the South African team actually talked about playing long balls. And in that tweet, he said, we forced them to, to play long balls, throwing it we forced them to play long balls, knowing that the long balls would make them to cause mistakes. We saw the girls pushing long balls to the 18 yards. And eventually, it happened. It was like we're predictable. And some people are saying, you have fantastic players, but you know the combination, when you have people who should not be playing in the midfield playing, then it becomes a disaster. What can we learn from the lesson, uh, you know, the failure, the, the fact that we lost to South Africa in that game. It's a good thing that we won Botswana, Botswana, but we have a game with Burundi. Uh, what are the lessons that Nigerians need to learn or the Super Falcon uh, needs to learn ahead of the game for Burundi? Uh, Mercy, I think they've already learned their mistake. I mean, the game against South Africa was, uh, was the first game, and the first was pretty much better than the first game. You know, in football, there is this saying that you're as good as your last game. They mentioned that meant their mistake. The coach made about three changes in that particular game. Uh, playing Tony Payne, who was not a, a, a left back, she didn't wing up, but she played as a left back and she did well. The likes of uh, Michel Alonzi was very fantastic at the number 11 position. Uh, he former Nomino, who was replacing Ashisa Oshola, was very good at the striking force. So I think that meant their mistake, but there is still much work to be done. They need to also take a look at the game against Botswana because I also think there are some mistakes in that particular game. The Packers were not connecting as they should connect. I mean, being the African champions, you're supposed to play very well. I I I'm going to say it again. We should look past the South Africa game. We should because we've been through from the South Africa game and we have been there against uh, Botswana. We should also take a look at Botswana game. Botswana game should be the case study right now because we play better than we did against South Africa. So I'm sorry if you're not, I'm not, I'm not talking about the South Africa game so much. I think we've done better than what we did against the Bayana Bayana. We should just improve on what we did against Botswana so that we can able to beat Burundi convincingly and play the quarterfinal of the Women's Cup of Nations. Well, I don't know if it's too early for us to begin to think uh, about, you know, uh, the Super Falcons uh, making it the 10th title right there. Do you think that they stand a chance? Yes, there's been a chance, but you know, uh, this is the first time a North African uh, country is hosting this competition. And Morocco are doing pretty well in Group A, and they will do very well. I mean, where you where you are the host nation is not just about a football game, it's about the pride of the whole nation. So Nigeria, uh, they have a chance because of the other defending champions. But I don't think they should be complacent about this. They, they shouldn't be uh, just thinking it's going to be an easy road for them. They shouldn't think it's going to be a walk in the park. Cameroon are having a poor start, but if they win their last game, they can get to qualify to the quarterfinals. Senegal are not doing so bad as well, and as well as Morocco. So although they have a chance, but they should not underrate any team. Morocco, by the way, are the team to beat for me, and I, I keep them to play in the finals. Well, th many thanks, uh, Monday Thomas, for being part of the show this morning. We appreciate your thoughts and insight.
on all of the uh, you know games going on with the Super Falcons right there. It was a pleasure being on the show with you. Uh, Mercy, thank you for having me. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day. We have been speaking with uh, Monday Thomas as a sports journalist and we're looking at the Super Falcons are the uh, the games, uh, African uh, Women Cup of Nation right there, uh, how they've been faring, but fingers across anticipating the game with Burundi. Let's see how that pans out. All the best to the team and that's the size of a conversation. If you missed out on any part of it, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bupo. Have a great morning.